Good morning, uh, Intro to Theory class, MUCT 105L. This is your remote lecture for week eight. Um, let's jump right into it. We're going to do a, a couple of different things. We're going to introduce a couple of new concepts today, so this will be lots of fun. Let's go ahead and start singing our scales. All right, we're going to start with the major mode. Okay, sing the major mode with me. One, two, three, four. that can be lowered are lowered, me, le, and te. Sing it two, three, four. Do, re, mi, fa, so, li, te, do, te, li, so, fa, mi, re, do. And now, as always, if you want another shot at it, or you just want to, to, to warm up a little bit more, just pull back the slider, you know, 20 seconds, and we'll be right back there. Okay, let's go to harmonic minor mode. Remember, this is the one that has the very large augmented second interval between le and t. One, two, three, four. Do, re, mi, fa, so, re, ti, do, ti, re, so, fa, mi, mi, do. And we go to melodic minor, which has the different form ascending as it does descending. La and T on the way up to Do, Te and Le on the way back down from it. One, two, ready, go. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Te, Do, Te, Re, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. All right, now that we're all warmed up, please open up your Berkowitz book. Please open up your Berkowitz book to page 13. Page 13, last Friday, Friday of week 7, um, we uh, spent some time on page 13, number 43, uh, minor mode. Uh, we learned the turnaround gesture, gesture number 17, the turnaround gesture. But now we're going to go back into the major mode. We've been in the minor mode for a little while, but we're going to go back into the major mode for a little bit, starting on number 44 on page 13. Okay, and I told you we're in the major mode, so you look at that, see the one flat, and know that you're in the key of F major. Let's go ahead and roll that, and see what, see what we can see here. Do, it begins on Do. If you look at the first four measures, you have a couple steps up, and a little leap down, step up, and then you have the same thing, one step higher. So that is a sequence, that is a sequence between the first four measures and the second four measures. Note also that there are articulations here, there are some staccatos, and then there are some uh, legato indications with tie lines there and uh, across, uh, across measures, across phrases. So let's go ahead and sing this one. Um, I'll give you two subdivided measures and we'll be in. One and two and one and two. Do, re, re, mi, do, re, mi. Fa, re, mi, mi, fa, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, do, ti, la, sol, do, re, re, mi, do, re, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, mi, Fa, re, mi, re, do, ti, do. All right, good. Let's go down to number 45, vivace, the next one. This one, it's not, there's not really a theme here, although there's kind of a theme of quarter notes, then eights, then quarters, then eights, then quarters, then eights, kind of alternating. And there's a lot of sol, do here. Do, sol, and sol, do, and do, sol, do. Can okay, remember the, uh, the sol, do leaps uh, from the gestures? Very, very important interval between Do and Sol because it really helps to establish the key. Okay, if you look here, you will see the first note and the last note are A flat, four flats in the key signature. We are looking at the key of A flat major. Note 
go. All right, it's vivace, but let's do it at a nice moderate tempo, so it's not too fast. Okay, got some staccato lines to here. One and two and three and four and do, sol, do, sol, do, ti, do, re, do, sol, la, sol, la, ti, do, ti, do, re, mi, sol, la, ti, do, ti, do, re, mi, re, mi, fa, sol, mi, do, mi, re, do, re, mi, do, ti, la, sol, la, ti, do, sol, do, do. All right, so see there's a lot of that sol, do relationship there, then some nice uh, undulating lines with uh, eighth notes. Let's do one more. Uh, number 46, Andante Cantabile. Um, four flats, we just changed clefs. Okay, so we're in the same key, key of A flat major, we've just changed to treble clef. Okay, notice there's some leaps here, but they are generally leaps uh, outlining a chord or you know going to soul or something that we know very well. Okay, let's try and sing this one. It goes a little high, so do your best. One and two and three and one and two and three. Do, ti, do, re, sol, re, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do, sol, mi, re, do. All right, now it's time to introduce a new concept. Let's talk a little bit about clefs. Okay? We have uh, been dealing with two clefs so far, the bass clef and the treble clef. Let me get a little bit of a nicer pen that will show up a little bit more on the video. This is getting washed out a little bit. Let's find another one yet. There we go. Treble clef uh, and a bass clef. Okay, um, and we may have talked about this in class before, but when you look at the um, when you look at the clefs, you see that they, they kind of where they come from is is kind of hidden in the forms of what they are. If you look at the the bass clef. The bass clef has another name, it's, it's known as the bass clef, but sometimes it's also called the F clef. And if you kind of look from far enough away and squint your eyes, you can probably imagine it almost looks a little like a really fancy cursive F that's kind of lost some of its, uh, lost some of its parts. And that really actually is what it is. You know, originally, um, we were just the letter F. And what the, what the letter F did is in between the arms of the letter F, that's where the note F was. So um, F is here, and then uh, you know, over, over the time it uh, became a little bit nicer, more cursive, kind of like Gothic script, and, and then we got to where we are today. Kind of degraded, but still, it has two dots, basically in between those on the line, in between the two dots, shows you where F is. Now, you never see it anymore, but this clef is movable. Okay. If all this is saying is F is in this position, if it never moves from that position, we don't need a clef at all. So you can indeed change the position. You can put it there if you want. Sometimes this is called the baritone clef. You can see where that is. Okay. Same thing with treble clef. Okay. This is just review because we've talked about this already. But uh, same thing with treble clef. If you Look at it, and this one actually doesn't take much um, um, you know, squinting of your eyes at all because you just remember an uppercase cursive G, it really looks a lot like it. So this is a treble clef, but also known as a G clef. So where the little curly Q tightens in here is the note G. You can, and you may, 
see it here. You can, you may see it here, just wherever G is. And we've talked about why this is, because you know when you're trying to keep everything into into on, into the staff to save uh, paper, uh, you need to do what you need to do. So what you end up with. If you turn the page of your Berkowitz over to page 14, they are going to introduce you to the alto clef. Now, I'm not introducing you to the alto clef per se, I'm introducing you to the C clef. So look at the alto clef as they show it there. So they show you the treble clef, the bass clef, and then a couple of things that look like, I don't even know what they look like. Um, kind of like that. Okay, so you basically got a little couple of uh, loops, a couple of double lines, and a notch in the middle. And what the C clef is, and originally this was just the letter C, and then the letter C that had some like little fancy stuff, and became more and more and more fancy until it became kind of what it looks like today. And it's just telling you, like the treble clef and the ba bass clef, where C is. So wherever the notch is, wherever the two loops come in, that's C. Okay, middle C. Okay, it's often here. That's called tenor clef. This is called alto clef. Mezzo soprano clef. You can put it anywhere you want to save space. But the one we're going to talk about right now is alto clef. Okay, so where the notch is, that is where middle C is. So take a look at numbers uh, at the 47A, 47B, and 47C, which is on page 15. And they show you the identical melody in the three different clefs. So you can see in 47A, the first note is middle C. The C right below the staff is called middle C, not because it's in the middle of the staff, but because it's in the middle of the piano. And then you see 47B, you see in the notch there, which looks like it would be a D if it was in bass clef, or a B if it was in treble clef, that is a C. Okay, so that, where that middle line is, where the notch comes in, is middle C. And then if you go over to uh, page 15, number 47C, it's starting on middle C. Uh, so uh, each of these three, uh, these, uh, three uh, melodies are absolutely identical. Okay, so let's sing it. Um, but this time, look at the alto clef. Okay, if you read it in the, the treble clef or the bass clef, it'll be pretty easy because you know uh, how to do this. But look at the alto clef. The alto clef is not uh, difficult. It's no more difficult than singing in the bass clef or the treble clef. All you got to do is find do, and then it's just like anything else. Okay, because we're switching where do is all the time. When we're in bass clef, if we're in the key of C, then do is C. If we're in the key of D, do is in D. If we're in the key of G, do is in G. So in this case, in 47B, there is your first note, do, middle C. Let's go ahead and play it. Alright, so 47B, 1, 2, 3, 4, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Sol, Re, Mi, Fa, Mi, Re, Do, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, this on Fri uh, during Friday's class and, and do some of the examples on page 15, but for now, um, just so you have an idea of what the clef means and how to do it, uh, we'll be able to kind of uh, jump into what we're doing on Friday. Okay, go ahead and put your Berkowitz books away and get out your Kazez rhythm reading books because I'm going to introduce another new concept, another new concept. So get your Kazez rhythm reading books out. And let's talk about a different concept. So far, up until now, everything we've done, whether uh, melodically or rhythmically, has been based on simple meter. Okay, on simple meter. And what simple meter is, is simple. When you have a note, Okay, so let's say we're in 2-4 timing, so you've got a couple of quarter notes, you've got a nice measure here. And you want to divide into levels of subdivision. Okay, it's pretty easy what you do. You take the quarter note, if you want to subdivide at the first level subdivision, you just break it in half. 
quarter note breaks into two eighth notes. Okay. It can look like that or it can look like that. So instead of T, T, it's T, 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 T. Okay. You want to break it down even more to double subdivision, you just break it down in half again. T, T, Tiki, 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 Tiki. Okay, we've become fa uh, fairly familiar with that. So that's what simple, simple rhythm is. A simple meter is one where the first level of subdivision is just a simple uh, division in halves. So the new concept that I'm going to give you, that I'm going to present, is a different kind of meter. There are three kinds of meter. There is simple, there is compound, which we're going to do right, right now, there is irregular, which we're going to do much, much later. Compound meter. Compound meter. It's different. Um, it's different on a couple of levels. The major difference of, uh, between simple and compound meter is that a simple duple meter, when I say simple duple, it's simple, meaning it, it's divided into twos, and it's duple, meaning it's in two. Duple, like double. Okay. A compound duple rhythm does not have the quarter note as the unit of the beat. Rather, it has the dotted quarter note as the unit of the beat. And the reason why is what we do with the first level of subdivision in compound meter. In simple meter, the first level of subdivision is into two, into half. You, you break a quarter note into two eighth notes. In compound meter, the beat is divided into three. So... T, 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 T. Okay, so compound was T, 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 T. Uh, so simple was T, 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 T. Compound is T, 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 T. So your first level of subdivision is into three parts instead of two. Okay, so the, the, the most common compound meter, or one of the most common, is a compound duple, meaning it's in two. Because the, the uh, eighth note, the dotted quarter note, is getting the beat, T, T, and divided into threes, T, 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 T. It's probably one that you've experienced many times, six, eight time. Six, eight time. And you may wonder, well, wait, that doesn't make any sense. It says there's six beats and the B is the eighth note. We'll talk about it later. Just know, six, eight time truly is six beats for the measure, eighth note receiving the beat, but it's done in two. Okay, it's done in two. So it's a lot like 2-4, and if you don't have any subdivision, it, it's, uh, it's no different at all. And uh, to uh, illustrate that, look in your Kazez book on page 31. Okay, open up your Kazez book to page 31. And look at number 35, the first example there. See the 6-8 time? And see the dotted quarter note beat. Okay, this is going to sound exactly like something that you did in 2-4 time. It's going to be uh, almost indistinguishable because we haven't subdivided yet. Let's go ahead and do number 35. 1, 2, 1, 2. T, 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 T. The thing that makes um, compound meters somewhat difficult or potentially difficult is because you have to look at a dotted quarter note and being used already to reading simple meter, you have to get used to the fact that that's not one and a half beats, it's just one beat. Okay, because you've got three eighths notes in it and it needs to be a dotted quarter because a dotted quarter fits exactly three eighth notes in it. Alright, let's try number 36. Number 36. Now, if you were to take a whole measure worth of 6-8 time, and so what would be equivalent to two beats, a quarter, dotted quarter plus a dotted quarter is equivalent to a dotted half. Again, you have to suspend your disbelief 
that that is not three beats. In this case, it is only two. So it's almost like the dot doesn't matter. Okay? Uh, if, you're, if you're trying to kind of transpose and transition in from simple meter, it's like that dot's not even there. It's two beats. All right, let's try number 36. They're tying them together. This is 12-8 time. So 12-8, double 6-8. This is done in four. It's just one and a two and a three and a four and a... Let's do this one. Number 36. One, two, three, four. T, 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 T. T, T. And you notice in number 36, what goes for the notes goes for the rest as well. So in number 36, in the second measure, after the two uh, dotted quarters tied together, you see um, a dotted quarter rest and a dotted quarter rest. In the third measure, after the, after the, uh, the dotted half note, which equals two beats, you see a dotted half note, which also equals two beats. Turn the page to page 32, and let's, uh, let's skip a couple, and let's go down to the first level of subdivision, like what I just told you. Number 40, number 40. Now we're not going to do the speech cue of Beethoven, just do T, 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 T. So we're going to subdivide now at the first level of subdivision, which is now in three. So I'm going to give you two measures, two measures subdivided into one and a two and a one and a two and a T, 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 T. T, 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 T. Good. Now turn the page over to number 33. We're just going to do one more of these. Okay, page 33, number 41, top of the page. 12 8 time. 12 8 time. Now we're throwing rests, quite a few rests, and dynamics, and 12 8 time, so which is a compound quadruple or a compound four meter into the mix. Careful, there's a tie across the bar line on a shift and everything like that. Cazez is still trying to lay traps here. Let's try it. I'll give you one measure subdivided in four, compound four, which is 12 8 time. One and a two and a three and a four and a T. T, 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 T. T. T, 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 T T T T T T T T T T off. All right. Um, I'll wait till Friday uh, to go uh, through number 42, 43, etc., uh, working on the double subdivision. But it's very similar to what you had in simple meter. Notice here that they're uh, getting you right into the single and double subdivisions uh, because you already kind of know it. Um, once you get used to the fact that the beat is initially divided in the first level of subdivision into three, you're in good shape. It's very similar to simple meter right after that. Okay, so a uh, couple of new concepts, a uh, couple of new things that we went over, so that's plenty for now. I will see you guys on Friday. We'll kind of put this together, do a bunch of exercises, and maybe we'll run some intonation exercises as well. All right, see you guys then.